And at the very beginning, my focus was on the frustration, the anger, the disappointments. And I did not see myself making a lot of progress as I was hoping. Later, especially after Coach Bayil, I started to feel how my body is changing. Every time I was doing walking or even resting, I tried to understand different parts of my body, how they start to reconnect and how they start to unfreeze. And you know what? I feel I'm recovering on a much steadier pace right now. Is that mindfulness? That's one of the aspects of mindfulness, Daniel. You touched on the strong emotions. When we have a catastrophic injury, and a stroke is certainly a catastrophic injury, we have a tendency, like any human being would, to become very frightened and very angry. It's so frustrating. As you said, what you used to do so simply becomes so difficult. So you get really frustrated. And that's a normal emotion. The problem is when we get stuck there, when we keep nursing that anger and that fear. And what you learn to do by paying attention to what was going on in your body, which is a form of mindfulness, what you learn to do was notice that anger, honor it, and not get caught up in it. And that's another benefit of mindfulness. Allison is right because, you know, I had a stroke 19 and a half years ago. And when, you know, I can't get out of bed gracefully, you know, quote, gracefully, as I now know it, I'm just like, oh, my God, after 19 and a half years, I get frustrated. I get angry, you know, but then I let go of the anger, hopefully go on. Thank you, Ria. Uh, it just, you know, it really, um, really makes the point that uh, what Rita was saying uh, that, you know, it's being mindful and uh, that allows us to notice right away when we start to spin out around what I haven't accomplished or, you know, um, where I am right now is not satisfying to me. Um, and that we can catch it early on before it has the same kind of a, a negative effect when we spin out like that and start like getting angry at ourselves. Um, and it, you know, it, it works against us. So the sooner we can catch ourselves that we're doing that and stop it and then rather than that apply some self-kindness or some compassion for, for the self um, that um, will serve us much better. So before I had the strokes, yeah. I already had a mindfulness practice. I was really fortunate, really fortunate that I had that practice. When I came into the strokes, I knew something about how to pay attention, and I also knew something about how to be with those difficult emotions. In the middle of the night was when the fear was the worst. I was so frightened. I couldn't move in my bed. I couldn't read because my eyes weren't focused. I could barely move enough to turn on, turn on a light or call the nurse. There was so little I could do. I was awake, and I would lie there with the fear. Because I had a mindfulness practice, I knew that the fear wouldn't stay there. I knew that the fear would move on. I knew that if I simply stayed there with the fear and let it be there, it would pass. And it did. And that's what got me through the middle of the night. When I tried to learn to walk, I had already had a practice called walking meditation. Walking meditation is a teaching 
that shows us how to move really mindfully. Make a little movement and really pay attention to how that movement is done. I had practiced that walking. Can you imagine how useful it was for me to have already had a practice of paying close attention to what my legs, my feet, my body was doing while I was walking? It was incredibly useful. And those kinds of practices can be learned. They can be learned and practiced quite simply. The fact that I already knew them was a blessing. The fact that somebody else might not know them doesn't mean they can't learn them very quickly. And that's part of what I teach. Yeah, awesome. I want to share something that you helped me. And you know, to many professionals, you keep planning for what's coming next. The next audit, the next big meeting, the next big project, and you worry about everything that's going on and try to manage the risk, try to contain it, try to finish it, try to look good. Your mind is always worrying, thinking about something. You know, when I first got struck, so I started a mental project plan. Why have I not finished the phase one yet? I want it to be done by the third month. Well, actually, the body doesn't work this way. I think the coaching you helped me most was to realize, number one, everybody's different. Number two, stop thinking about things that's not helpful. Thinking about how Neil got back to work in four months really has nothing to do with how my body recovers because it is my body, not Neil's. Stop thinking about Neil. Think about yourself. Think how your body is changing. Try feeling. Calm it down. Because I'm not Neil. That's absolutely right, Daniel. The only person you have to work with, the only body you'll ever have, is your own. And within it, if you pay attention to it, within it is the magic, is the real information, is life pulsing and processing, is the way through only within yourself. Can you find that one? Alison, for someone new to mindfulness, if they want to find the right coach, how do you start? There are many ways to find someone to teach you mindfulness. Mindfulness is taught in various religious practices. If that's where you're comfortable, you can go there. Mindfulness is taught secularly by a variety of practitioners. We're now teaching mindfulness in grade schools. If you're looking for somebody to teach mindfulness to you, one of the good ways to find someone is to find out who has been trained to teach mindfulness-based stress reduction. This is a practice that was taught and created by a man named John Kabat-Zinn. And Dr. Zinn is very well known now throughout the world for his teaching and his development of mindfulness-based stress reduction. And lots of teachers have been trained in this. So you can look for someone in your community. Thank you, Alison. Mindfulness, the technique to engage neuroplasticity and make it one, make it work for you. We'll have more discussion around mindfulness and neuroplasticity in the future. Stay tuned.